Who could do this to two hundred over two hundred reptiles? It's just this might took a few heartstrings this video because it is a sad one with a positive twist at the end. Let's just say that. And there's not a lot that I can actually say just solely because it is still a huge police incident that's going on. I've got vague details that I can share, that's about it. But Cheshire Reptile Rescue, I've just come back from there now. You might be able to see a glass tank just there. Yeah, I've got plans for that. But um, I'm up and down there all the time. And um, I got a phone call, can you come and help us? We've had a big job last night, a big police seizure. And this is big, uh, we need your help. And I was like, yep, sound, I'll drop everything I'm doing, I'll come and help. Um, Cause that's the, you might notice I'm building a big raw python enclosure, a big five foot bioactive setup at the minute, and it should have really have been uploaded now. But this week it's been put on hold to help out with the reptile rescue. Um, the police seizure has been one of those things where it's they've been struggling to gain access to the property. The person just keeps no, not today. I can't do it today. I can't do this. He wanted to do it as a peaceful thing, um, and then it turned out. We need to get them now. He got the phone call right yet yeah, now, one night. Uh, the police seizure was for, I think it was 317 reptiles. Mm. Upon arriving at the property, um, there was a hundred and, just, uh, just over a hundred, 106, 105 there or thereabouts that were alive. I let that sink in. They just weren't cared for. There was no passion to care for them. Chameleons that were just skeletons. There was unidentifiable skeletons where it was just a skeleton in a closure and the person, well, I can't remember what was in there. Um, there was chameleons that were just hanging off branches. They were, they were deceased. Um, but in that enclosure there was also tarantulas and scorpions. I'm not going to show any of the footage or videos or pictures because it's... it's it's heartbreaking, it's heartbreaking. How, how could somebody do this? Um, so <coughs> they got them back up to the rescue anyway, and that's where I come in and I sort of go there to help them out. My task for that day was to help with health checks, um, set up some of the an animal enclosures that were not suitable. So there was like, there was enclosures sat on top of big exoterras but then the bottom of the enclosure broke through, so it just sort of fell. And there was a tarantula walking around. Well, there's no enclosure or anything with that, so we had to sort out an enclosure. So we had to do that. We had to identify a lot of the, or some of the animals, especially the invertebrates and the invert, the tarantulas and the arachnids, all that sort of stuff, solely because uh, it's a reptile rescue. They don't deal with invertebrates and uh, arachnids. They just don't deal with it, so they don't have the knowledge. That's where I come in with some of my contacts. Massive, massive shout out to Scott's Inverts. Scott, he was the uh, lifeblood of that task. I was constantly FaceTiming him. Oh look, we've actually took this enclosure apart, fully webbed out enclosure. What species is this? And it's instantly, bang, there it is. Um, and he'd tell us all the care requirements needed for that specific species. And we could set it up in an enclosure appropriate for it and stuff like that. There's a lot of these animals that are not going to be rehomed for an awful, awful long time. One, because, I mean, there was over 200 that were dead. We took just over 100 in. <clears throat> but they're not healthy. Far from it. There was over 50 snakes with respiratory infections. Some of them really, really bad. So they're going to need extra treatment. There was scale rot. There was missing tails, kinked legs, feet bitten off, bearded dragons. Oh, God. It was horrendous. But it was, we, we did, we got it, we sorted, we got everything. But how can a reptile rescue that's already at capacity keep hold of another 100 animals? Well, that's where the community came in. Because owning a respectable reptile rescue... You, you build up a list of contacts, people that could help people that specialise in this, people that are better at that, and it that worked out. I mean, some of the boa constrictors, they went off to a boa constrictor rescue, fairly local. Um, some of the Pac-Man frogs, they went off to somebody else as well. Massive shout out. This is another thing that I don't normally like making videos like this, but there's a lot of my viewers have, didn't even know Cheshire Reptile Rescue it even existed until they watched my video and they started going there and every time I've been there's always somebody that says 
oh hey i watch your videos and i'm like oh wow that's amazing so they're i'm putting out the information that the rescue's there and they're getting the rescue's getting finances to help keep it running it's ways raising awareness for that specific reptile rescue and it's just really nice and it's great to meet some of those people i think one of them he comments all the time a uh, railway photographer i think it is something along those lines he took some of the pac-man frogs um, they had Nairsbra Reptile Rescue, another highly reputable reptile rescue in Nairsbra in the UK. They had to, they transported a load of animals up to them so they could help out. But then there's still, we've got all these animals. Where can we put them all? We physically don't have the space. <clears throat> so that's where we got like they've got a um, domestic pet unit where they've got like all the dog foods, the cat foods, all that sort of stuff. Now the reptile rescue has brought that in so that they could sell that at a profit and that profit helps keep the reptile rescue going i mean it's non-profit organization all the profit goes straight back into the actual uh, reptile rescue to keep the reptile rescue going i mean you think how much they're gonna have to spend on vets just for the respiratory infections alone it costs a fortune so uh, that sort of stuff's great but we got we took a loss on the dog food basically just grabbed the dog food unit tipped it up into a big massive crate and i took all that dog food down to the local dog shelter they were well happy to have that donation and we were well happy to have that space we managed to basically put all the baby snakes all the hog nose snakes all the smaller snakes in a big unit just there to keep them all separated so we can keep a very close eye on every single one of them uh, I've, I've been down there, I've picked up a load of more extra bits and pieces, I've got a big glass tank there, I've got a load of decor in the back as well. Again, that was the main purpose of that was to make space in the facility, but it's all done and dusted now. But we've, we've managed to work it in such a way where there's enough space to actually still be able to run a successful uh, reptile rescue. Because you think to make it successful, there has to be reptiles being rescued and rehomed to loving forever homes. Uh, so we've still got the space for that now and it's all coming together really nicely now the animals are starting to there was a few that didn't look like they were going to make it through the night but they did <coughs> it was just absolutely mind-blowing to see the condition of all those snakes all those lives lost it's it's sad but i mean there, there are things that you guys can do to help and it's not going to cost you a single penny um what i'd like you to do is we want to raise awareness for Cheshire Reptile Rescue. You think the more finances they can get coming in, the more animals they can rescue. Uh, and that's the whole goal of it all, to save animals' lives. Um, I'd like you to like this video and leave a comment down in the comment section. That way YouTube are going to know that this is a video that people like, people are engaging with, and they're going to push it out to a lot more people and in turn raise more awareness for Cheshire Reptile Rescue. I mean, what did I pick up? Let's go and have a look at what I picked up. I mean, like I say, I've only just come down now. You're gonna to have to mind the mess because I'm really busy. We've got a glass tank here. Uh, inside that paper there, that's the actual glass sliding door. It's got a bulb holder on it. I don't think that's gonna stay there. Uh, but this is possibly actually gonna to go to Scott just as a thank you for the help that he actually gave us. I've got a heat mat, skull, a pitch black hide, uh, just loads of random bit so that's the exoterra uh, aztec range we've got more little hides they always come in handy especially if i end up taking in rescues which some sometimes i do i mean how nice is that that grew great in the back corner of an enclosure we've got a big hide down there some more stuff up here we've got if you have seen me down at cheshire reptile rescue or anywhere else for that matter stick let me know in the comments down below i know there's a fair few people i just can't remember everybody's names on youtube to be totally honest with you but it's been a pleasure to meet everybody anyway I wonder if it'll be worth doing like a meet and greet sort of thing at Cheshire Reptile Rescue. I'm sure the lads there will be like really up for that as well. Maybe even turn it into a little bit of a fundraiser. That'd be great. Do some little events, some animal handling, bring the kids up. There's a lovely little park there. There's a cafe there as well. Ah, that's a good idea. Let me know what you think about that as well. So with it being a non-profit organisation, Cheshire Reptile Rescue, it relies on donations of not just financial donations but equipment donations because that gets sold on if it's obviously viable to sell it on uh, the animals that come in it's, it basically works around that anybody who gets anything from cheshire reptile rescue is saving animals lives it's not just cheshire reptile rescue any reptile rescue nairsborough reptile rescue 
uh, Cheshire Bowers, anything like that. You guys are helping save all these lives. Because, did you notice I've been wearing sunglasses the whole time? <laughs> I say you can't see me tear up when I'm talking about the 200 dead animals, all because of a relationship breakdown. <laughs>